So I seek the blessings of Sri Satya Sai Baba. May the Lord bless you in this uh, lovely August gathering, in the large numbers that you've come. Today is a very momentous day for us because uh, I think the school is now 10 years old and it's been quite a journey since the day we begin operations because uh, I still remember my first uh, annual gathering when the school had just uh, begun operations and it was truly commendable because a lot of team members had put in a lot of hard work to get the school up and running in record time. And uh, I go back to that day because uh, in a flash 10 years have passed by and there have been so many parents who have been associated with the school. There have been so many students who have been associated with the school. So many team members have come to the school. Some team members have moved on and I think it's a journey that began many years ago but continues its way forward. I want to thank all the parents who are the early adopters of the school because we have some lovely parents who have supported us throughout these years through our good times and through our bad times and I think I must particularly thank them because when there were testing times I think these parents stood by us and they believed in our vision, they supported us and they gave us a hand holding to take the school further. And I would also like to thank all the teachers who were with us during this journey because we have many, many lovely teachers who have been with us since inception. I have several names here to uh, say but uh, the list has not been given to me and I remember fondly many of the teachers who had joined in the year of inception. I think a lot of people know about the DY Partal Group, but uh, people who are not aware of the DY Partal Group, I think it's one of the largest educational group in India. Uh, we have now schools operating in uh, Dharamshala, we have schools operating now in Patna, in Pune, in Nagpur, in Ranchi, we have a school in Belgium, we've also started an establishment in the Caribbean islands. I think the group is expanding its operations not only throughout the country but around the world. I think one thread that unites us is the passion for education. I think education is in our DNA and that's what we do best. I think over a time, a lot of students got involved with a lot of social activities because uh, it's not merely the education you take back from the school. It's not you come to a class at about 8 o'clock and then go back home at 2.30. But it's really the learning that you arrive at. It's the learning that you get from attending such a school. And most of the learning is done academically, but I think there are many other issues that the school has touched on. For example, the ban on uh, plastics was taken up very passionately by the school. Uh, my dear friend Asif was involved with the whole moment, but I think our school took it up as a challenge. Uh, many other social issues we want to take up, and I think over the coming months, you will see that the school will be involved in many other such events, such as saving the environment, the ban on honking, traffic violations, and certain things that affect us directly. Because I think as children, as the future of this country, you can make a change, you can make a huge change. And I think there's a lot of learning we can do from you, because as adults, sometimes we forget what it is to live a normal life. As adults, sometimes we forget what are the good things that one must give to others. I think children have that innocence in their heart and I think there is a lot of learning we can do from children. I also want to talk a little bit about the understanding and empathy among students because uh, the school is making extra efforts to accommodate differently enabled students. And I think when I talk about differently enabled students, these are children with exceptional qualities, exceptional talents. And these are children which are misunderstood, which society doesn't understand. And I think even as colleagues, even as students, you must understand that when you work with such children, you're doing not only society a favor, but even God is blessing you. So I think you'll see a lot of uh, impetus given by our school to take care of specially enabled children. And you will see this in the coming years. I think in the last uh, two years, the school has gone through a lot, lots of up and downs. Uh, we had several issues where uh, there were some very angry parents uh, discussing uh, the workings of the school. And uh, what we did is we swung into action because of the complaints of these parents. We put in a lot of remedial measures and some of the remedial measures came at a rapid pace. Some of the measures took some time to implement. But over a period of time, I think we've been able to smoothen most of these issues. So while there were some heated debates and arguments among stakeholders, 
Today, I think we retrospect and thank these parents for bringing this to our attention because this will only allow us to strive to become a better school. So thank you very much, parents. Just a few days, I bumped into some of our ex-students, and uh, I fondly refer to them as the alumni of the school. And many of these lovely children are doing wonderful, wonderful things around the world. They are placed in some of the best institutes around the world, then some Ivy League colleges. Uh, some of them have moved on to better pastures. And what we are doing is we're doing a connect program. So you'll see a lot of these ex-students coming back to the school and addressing and interacting with our team members as well as the children of the future. So that is something we are going to do from next year. I think it's also the Christmas spirit this year. And we have a lot of uh, members from the Christian community here, so I wish them a very Merry Christmas and a very lovely Happy New Year because we s celebrate the Christmas spirit with a lot of love and with a lot of joy and with a lot of passion. So it's indeed a pleasure to address this gathering during this festive time. I once heard the great Aga Khan speak in a speech that you may become a very rich man, you may become a very successful man, you may become a very affluent man. You may all lose that in one second, you may lose that in one very moment. But education is something that remains with you for life and education is something which will make you bounce back again and again in life. So it is very important to understand the importance of education. It is very important to understand that the knowledge you gain will be for you forever and ever, and it'll only do you good, it can never do you bad. So these are the words that I would like to quote because uh, when the Aga Khan spoke, it was a great inspiration for me. These words, they echoed in my mind, and I do believe that the young children should understand the importance of education. Kyle is not with us today, and uh, his parents are here, so I fondly remember Kyle because when his picture was flashed on the screen, my eyes became moist. But then I think we have to gather the strength to understand what, what his parents are going through. Because when I met his parents, I could not express in my emotions or in words that how I felt for a child. It was almost like I lost my own child. But like I said to his parents that in love we are with you, in sadness we are with you, in happiness we are with you. And we cherish the memory of Kyle in the school. We, we wish you strength, we wish you good luck, and we will always remember Kyle in our hearts and minds. Thank you very much. On behalf of D.Y. Patel family, uh, I would like to share some few words, few moments. The way all the parents and all the children, the way they gave the love for the Kahil's event, of course it was a sad event, but it gave us all immense strength to face that challenge. We are still facing it. We are still fighting it. And I am humbly acknowledging Dr. D. Y. Dr. Ajinkya Patil to spend 40 minutes with us just like a family member, Mr. and Mrs. Patil, just stood with us hand on hand, sat with us, they cried, they sat with us and they also said that don't, don't lose your strength, we all we are always with you all. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Dadia. And I think coming to children, my daughter just celebrated her 18th birthday recently. And uh, I was wondering what gift to give her, because uh, when a child is, uh, when an adult is 18, really, not a child, what can you give this adult? Because uh, you've given them iPhones, you've given them iPads, you've given them computers, you've given them fashion, you've given them practically everything they want. So what can you give a child? And I thought with a deep breath that, yes, I'll pen a few words for her. And I wrote a very touching letter to her. And in that letter, I explained what the family does. And I would want to say a little bit about what I wrote in that letter. Because I remember my father speaking to me that way. My father is now 84 years old.
But my grandfather started the legacy of education because he was a landlord, he was a farmer, and he had sponsored thousands of children, and it was always his dream to set up educational institutes. That legacy was carried on forward by my father. He set up several institutes of eminence, 200 in number totaling, more than 250,000 students around the world. And I think that's a dream that he wishes for his children to continue. I carry that dream. I carry that dream because we feel education can truly empower people. It can change people. It can create a social fabric that is very viable for a nation. And I think an education nation is a developing nation. It can develop on its own. It can think differently. It can have a buoyant growth factor. I think that's the dream that I would like to pass on to my children. And that's what I wrote in that note. And after reading that note, my daughter just hugged me and she said, I'll try my best to do what you're doing. So I think that was the greatest gift I could give to my child. Why I say this is because the family is very passionate about education. The family is completely embalmed in education and education is something which runs in our blood. And it's just not education because now I see uh, you get a degree, you become a graduate, you become a doctor, you become an engineer you graduate in art, science, or whatever field you choose. But I truly feel that the educational system that existed in India was very different to the educational system that we are running now. And this might sound a bit old fashioned, but I think there was a lot of knowledge in the traditional education system that used to be based in India. Because I, how do you explain I, some of the Vedic scholars or a Vedic Pandit who's just merely 14 years old, will be able to tell you the distance between the sun and the moon and the moon and the earth and what, what's happening in space. And today we need GPS or Google or some scientists or rockets to go up and tell us that. So I think somewhere we have to retrospect that we have to have a combination of the East and a combination of the West. No particular system is the best. So I think you have to decide to take the best practices from all around the world and incorporate this into our educational system. Often I wonder what is the point of learning some subjects because many of the subjects that were taught to me during my schooling years are really of no use. And the examination, the examination is a big challenge because why do you have to learn and remember everything? So it's more of a memory test rather than really a knowledge test. Uh, if, if I would make a controversial statement, I think kids should be allowed to use their books in examinations because that way we at least know that they've read the books. Otherwise, it's just about learning things. But then people would... <laughs> But then the fine academics and intellectuals would uh, advise uh, people that I am encouraging copying. And, uh, but the idea of a child coming into a school is really about enjoying the experience. It should not be a stressful event. It should not be something which uh, a child doesn't feel happy about. A child should go to a school like it's his learning atmosphere. It's like his second home. And I do believe our teachers make them feel that way. We try to tell our teachers to make them feel that way. We keep on improvising the way uh, we, work, we work on our systems. But I think the whole educational system needs a radical transformation. And I think that transformation is coming. If it's not coming soon, I think eventually it is coming because many new schools are emerging, many new schools of thoughts are emerging, and uh, many parents also homeschooling their kids because they feel that the knowledge that they can offer to their child is far superior to any knowledge that any good school can offer. So we'll strive to be a different school. You'll see a lot of changes in the coming years. Things will change here rapidly. I also want to say that since my wife took charge of the school last year, she's worked relentlessly in the background. She never comes in the limelight because she wants me to be the face of the school. But the real hard work is done by Pooja Patil because since she's taken charge, I think she's not uh, rested for even a single day. Even on holidays, she's working thinking about how to improvise the school, thinking on how the kids will be happy, thinking about the quality of the staff, the systems and processes that we have. And while we had some best practices, I think what had happened over a period of time is our team fell into complacency. And that complacency is not good for any organization. And I think that new life was injected into the institute because of the involvement of my lovely wife. So thank you, Pooja, for bringing up the school to this level. 
Sai recently joined the school and uh, I don't know how she'll react now because she told me you're not going to take my name, you're not going to tell anyone I'm your father, but yes, I am a father. And uh, the first time she joined school, uh, she came back with a report card and it had a B grade. And I was extremely upset because she's never got a B grade. She's always been an A grader. And I really got upset and I gave her a piece of my mind. I have my own unique way of uh, telling my child that this is not the right thing to do. And she felt uh, very hurt. She felt uh, very sad uh, to an extent that we didn't speak for a week. And uh, lo and behold, uh, in the next exam, uh, she throws her report card on my face. And so I look at it, and with a pleasant smile, I see all A grades. You know, so I think that's the passion she had for that. But I took a thought from that, that I put her under so much pressure for a B grade, that you know, she worked hard to get that A grade. But at the end of the day, what is a grade? whether it's an A or a B or a C. It's the child that has to be happy, and I think that's what's more important. So retrospect, again, I think that, you know, putting a child through so much pressure, whether it's my child, your child, and I'm saying this to the teachers as well, I'm saying this to the academics, that children should have a lovely experience in a school. Children should feel that these are my mentors. Children should feel that my teachers are doing something nice for me, and there should never be pressure on the children. That said, I think the children have to do equally good because don't take it for granted. It's going to be a tough school. There's going to be a lot of discipline, and there's a lot of expectations from the kids as well because unless you get that soul, unless you get that content and the creativity out of the child, you can never truly experience the joy of how the creativity of the child will come out. And there are lovely, lovely children. Everybody has an ability. Somebody has an ability in art, somebody has an ability in mathematics, somebody has an ability in science, and that ability has to be tapped. But allow your children to excel in the area they like the most. Don't force your thoughts onto them. Don't force your position onto them, because kids have independent and honest thinking. Let their honesty prevail, let their honesty flower. So this is how I would like to say, I believe a lot in spirituality and I always talk about spirituality. And I feel the power of prayers is very important and I'm, I'm really happy that the school started with prayers because it's a given statistic that if, if a number of people pray at any given time, a lot of change comes around in this world. Do excuse me, my throat is getting a bit dry, so I'll just have some water. So today, I just urge you to pray in the interest of others, not in your own interest. Because the prayers that work best are when you pray for somebody you don't know or somebody who doesn't know you. So today, I urge you, even children, that every time you go home, every time you sit in solace, today you'll make a prayer that my prayers, God, please help someone who is unfortunate, unprivileged, someone who's in sadness. Because people have problems, people have healthcare problems, people have social problems, people have depression problems. And there are so many problems that the world faces. But I think as a collective community, if we pray for the welfare of this world, I think a lot of change can come. So shed your jealousy, shed your pride, shed your ego, and pray for the welfare of this world. This is the school that we want to create. This is the DY Patel community that we want to create. Let us be a big beacon of hope for the world. <laughs> Kyle's father was on stage here and uh, I think in my uh, formative years, uh, I'm not very old, but when I was a young child, uh, I was uh, deeply intrigued with technology uh, to a sense that I wanted to be a scientist and I like to invent things. In fact, I broke things down and I joined them just because I felt uh, curious about how things worked. Uh, and uh, today I see Google pervades us, the internet pervades us, and there's so much technology around us that sometimes we forget that we exist. And while there are the pros of technology, I think we have to be conscious to the fact that technology can create problems as well. And I think these problems will not occur now because these problems will only come to light after a few years. But I think as parents, we have to be a little conscious about the fact that how we expose children to technology. Because when you give them iPads, you give them iPhones, they're glued to this object. And basically, they lose all social interaction. And if you see the statistics, when you take 
charge of your phone, you lo lose a lot of cognitive skills, you lose a lot of physical skills, parts of your brain rewire, parts of your physical system rewire, and you operate in a very different world. So do you want your future to be like that, glued to a virtual reality a sort of world and not live in reality? So you may have thousands of friends on Facebook, but how many friends do you have on fast dial where you could pick up the phone and pour your heart out to? So I think that's the real social network. You need to connect with real people. So I'm not by any sense saying that technology is bad, but exposure to technology to these little children has to be monitored by parents. And I think it's very important to understand the ill effects of technology. Recently, I saw a movie, The Robot, uh, in which Rajnikant acts. He's a well-wisher and a dear family friend. And I was surprised a film like that has never come out before because it's a known fact that radiation causes cancer. Radiation causes damage in ways and means that are unrepairable. Yet, we promote these technologies. So at least let's not expose our children to these technologies which can take their innocence away, which can make them like numbers or machines operating. And uh, when I talk of technology again, because uh, we want our children to play some outdoor games. We want our children to connect with people. We want our children to feel a bit real. So I think give it a deep, hard thought on next time you give a gadget to your child on how you monitor that gadget. Because when you go, you tell your child when he goes out, don't speak to a stranger. Don't connect with this one. Don't go here. Don't do that. But there is this stranger in their hand which is talking to them 24-7 over which you have no control and you never think about it. So I think next time you think about that stranger that is changing the perception of your children. And this is a whole new generation that is changing. So somewhere we have to go back to our roots. In a sense, I think many of the parents sitting in this auditorium are from the analog generation. So I'm fortunate that I was able to see the analog world as well as the digital world. So we understand that the two emerging worlds are very different to what were there. But I think the new kids are being exposed to these new technologies and they'll be wired in so effectively that they would not understand what reality is. So as an educationist, I would like to say a few things. In the meantime, I, I had uh, expected uh, someone to make a presentation for you. However, that gentleman couldn't uh, make it because, uh, uh, because of some issues. So uh, I'll have to announce that anyways. So I think for the past few years, we've been talking about the expansion of the school. We've been talking about adding spaces. We've been talking about a new building. We've been talking about many things. But I'm happy to state today that work on the new expansion has already started. And you will see it coming up very soon. So this was a testing time for us because uh, it took a long time to get the permits. We had to go through municipal permits. We had to go through various statutory and government authorities to get these permissions. But not only is, uh, may I have some silence, please? May I have some silence, please? Thank you. So the building will be coming up very soon, and uh, you would have some excellent spaces. I believe there's a presentation which uh, uh, Kunal Kwadekar was supposed to do. So he's the same architect who designed the JBC and the Ecole Mondial and many other monuments around the country. So it's a beautiful structure that's coming up at the back side of our building. I hope I can show you the presentation here. But we'll be not only doubling our capacity, probably tripling our capacity, because there would be a lot of spaces created. And all the defects that we had because of lack of space, because of less areas, these all will be taken care of because we've taken a lot of feedback from the parents. We've taken a lot of feedback from our PTA. And again, I thank the PTA because I think that was an eye-opener because if the PTA wouldn't have been so aggressive, we would have never woken up. We, you know, so thank you. So Nasser, do you, do you have the presentation? Yeah. So I apologize for telling you a bit late because we believe in doing rather than showing. So work has already started and only then I had the courage to tell you that okay this building is coming up. So soon you'll have that. I wish Kunal was here because he would have explained to you the construction process, the timelines because we are using some different technology which enables us rapid construction. And just to end my conversation and again taking a cue from 
the past experience. You cannot face the future until you conquer the past. Only then will you be free. Only then can you make a mark. So you have to look at your past to conquer the future. And that's what we are going to do. We are, we are going to be the number one school in Mumbai. That's a promise I made to you 10 years ago. That's a promise I'm making you today. We will reach that target. It doesn't matter when. We will reach that target. There is no stopping us. Also, I think uh, children are so innocent. And uh, again, I remember very fondly a professor saying this. Is there was a cart of apples lying uh, on a table. And on each cart, there was written that only take one, God is watching. And so each child was picking up one apple. And at the end of the table, there were some chocolates with a little note scribbled by, again, a mischievous boy. God is watching the apples. Take all the chocolates that you want. So good luck, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. My deep appreciation to all the parents, all the teachers, the entire community of DY Partil who have made this possible, who support us, who help us achieve our goals, our targets. We will not let, let you down. We will not rest till we make this the number one school in Mumbai. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.